just wanted to go over something interesting that I was thinking about the other day about uh, patterns of features as datums. Um, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to just go over the basics of what the implications are of using a pattern of, of holes or features as datums. So there's sort of two ways in the current standard that you can do it. You can either do the pattern of holes and reference it at RMB, or you can do it at MMB. And there's been changes over the years. Uh, this is, I guess, I'm not sure if it was in the standard that you were allowed to do this before the, the 1994 standard. But when the 1994 standard was released, you were only allowed to do a pattern of features as a datum at, they called it at the time MMC, but it's now what we call MMB. And the purpose of that would have been a, to, or I, what they would have been thinking about is they would have been thinking about a pattern of like bolts or something where there's slot between the hole and the screws. So there's some rotation or movement allowable. But <clears throat> when they released the 2009 version, I'm sure people were complaining that, you know, sometimes we have things like dowels where there's, there's not, um, there's not an inherent gap necessarily between the part and the, and the dowel. There's often an interference fit. So they did end up adding a second, uh, paragraph to the standard talking about pattern of features of size at RMB. And it had some strange implications, um, or maybe not implications, but there, there was an omission that possibly wasn't cons considered that they, they fixed later with a, an additional few sentences in the 2018 standard. So at MMB, the, the information has not really changed since 1994. Uh, there, there's been some language changes, but the general idea has stayed about the same. You can see that they've updated some of the language, like Datum Feature Simulator is now, uh, what is it, True Geometric Counterpart. But in the RMB section, they actually up added an important feature, which is this, uh, this part right here, which is when the irregularities on a feature may allow the part to be unstable, a single solution shall be defined to constrain the part. And I will show you now what this is talking about. I'll go over I'll go over all of these cases, sort of what's what was has been what was considered in all these cases. And then I'll also go over something that I'm not sure has been considered. And I would love to hear people's thoughts on it. Starting with the MMB case, this is what the the gauge would look like and we'd have our virtual condition pins and then our virtual condition outer ring and everything would be we spaced out by the basic dimensions and then the part might look something like this so looking at it from M an MMB perspective this would be able to sort of knock around and as long as the part fit within the ring and over the gauge pins, this part would be considered a pass. When it comes to the RMB situation, the gauge is a little bit different. So as people probably know, when you measure something at RMB, you're typically the, you know, the gauge that you're pretending to use or actually using needs to have an expanding or contracting feature on the feature of size that is at RMB. In this case, or that's, what is it, MMB? And I, I think, so where people get confused, I think, with patterns is they go, okay, well, what, what's expanding and how are they expanding? It's pretty obvious when you're looking at a single feature you know, the collet is contracting around the outside or the pin is expanding on the inside of the feature. But when you add a second pin to the mix, how does that now work? So if we read the paragraph, where RMB is applied, 
yada 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 the datum feature simulators shall expand and contract simultaneously from their mmb to their lmb so you've got two pins that are simultaneously expanding in this case until they make full contact with the or or fully constrain the part so in this case the pins will make contact I think one point of contact here one point of contact here and that fully restrains the part now what they did not take into account in the 2009 version is that I guess what I should I should back up what they thought would happen is that the majority of the error in the features would come from positional error which is sort of what's happening in this case. So you would end up with uh, one point on maybe the inside of each hole or the outside of each hole constraining the part. But what they didn't consider as much is a situation where the positions are quite good, but the size of the features are significantly different. So in this case, the part is able to rotate so they've corrected that in the 2018 version, and they've said, they've added the second bit here. And this is what it's talking about, is when irregularities of the feature may allow the part to be unstable, a single solution shall be defined to constrain the part. So on your drawing, you might say, have a, let's say you had a flat or some sort of marking feature, you would say, okay, in a case where it's unstable, you push it all the way to the right or something like that. Uh, or the left or some, some way or maybe there's a mathematical way to do it something that I haven't seen talked about too much and is the main reason I'm making this video is that let's say you've got one of these situations where there's no rocking the parts fully stabilized with the two pins or constrained with the two pins the centroid the centroid of, of the features would be right here. The centroid of the, the datums would be right here. And this is what we would be effectively measuring the outside from. But something interesting happens. So if I'm calling out RMB on, say, a dowel, there's probably an interference fit on the dowel, especially, let's say, if it's a, an aluminum casting. You know, there, it's going to be an interference fit of some sort. And if you put the dowels in when you're doing the physical assembly, it would look something like this, where you've got, you've got interference maybe on one side of the feature, on, on, on this hole, and then all the way around on this hole. And I think that has an interesting implication. So I'm going to move over to a sketch and see if I can illustrate this. So here's my illustration and let's say the blue is the physical part, the black is the the gauge pins that were, were used in the inspection, fully constraining the part, and then the red is the dowels that will at some point be installed. So the implication here is that the dowels would be supposedly centered on the centroid of the two gauge pins. But something happens. So you've got an interference here of material, an interference here of material, and an interference back here with, of the material. And the interference here is going to cause a motivating force on the part the metal is going to try and force the part to go this way, right? Because the metal does not want to deform, so it's going to try and force the part off to the left. This metal here, which is going to be approximately the same amount, very close to, to this side, is having an opposite force, it's trying to push it that way. But then we have this additional piece here, 
which has a moving, motivating force pushing the part that way. So even though the centroid of the dowels is here, and that would be where the features would be measuring from, the centroid of the assembled part might end up being shifted a little bit because there is an additional motivating force from this interference of material motivating it to move that way. Why am I asking this? Well, in this scenario where, let's say, the part passes the gauge, it's exactly in contact with the ring gauge, there has to be a situation where the the size of the dowels might play play a factor during assembly that would maybe cause the part to no longer be be functional and i suppose there's this type of situation in a lot of cases which is why when you're designing something you often will pull a little bit a little bit of tolerance off the part is you know to account for for these kind of strange things but I was just curious if anyone else had, had considered this or run into this on a form or anything like that, because I haven't seen anything, and I would be curious to hear people's input. Anyways, have a good one.